What's up everybody? I hope y'all are having a wonderful day. I'm Anthony. On today's video, I got another episode of Perennial Spotlight. This one's going to be on the mulberry tree. Okay, so just like my other perennial spotlights, I'm going to focus on four topics. Number one, what is it? Number two, how do you grow it? Number three, why do I grow it? And number four, possible medicinal benefits. So number one, what is it? It is a fast growing temperate fruiting tree. There are three subtypes. First, you have the red mulberry, which is native to North America, followed by the black mulberry, which is native to Eurasia, as well as the white mulberry, which is also native to Eurasia. Now for the purposes of this video, we're going to focus on the red mulberry because that's what I have right here. How do you grow it? Pretty simple. Just like any other tree, you plant it. But beware that wherever you plant it, it is a fast-growing tree. It is one of those ones that you could put almost on the edge of a forest, and it will almost outcompete its neighbors. So if you want to put it in the understory, that's perfectly fine because it will give that tree a little boost to say, hey, I need to kind of grow faster and faster and faster to get above all these surrounding trees. This isn't one of those trees that's going to stay small. So make sure wherever you put it, you put it somewhere that it has the ability to grow to its full height. Some of these can reach up to 60 to 80 feet. So just beware of that. And also one thing I wanted to mention, when you do put this thing down, it can take a variety of different soils. That's why it's so good because it can handle drought, it can handle uh, you know, very harsh clay soil, it can handle sandy soil, and it can even handle a wetter soil. Don't get me wrong, it's not going to be good like in a floodplain, but if you keep it to the point where it's the soil can dry out at some point, it will survive. Now the best part about this tree is it is considered wild. You can see these things growing almost anywhere, especially in the southeast. You might walk through the woods, open to a thicket, you know, maybe like a little opening, maybe somewhere next to a power line easement, and hey, congratulations, there are mulberries. The best way to tell is the leaves. Now when identifying, you're going to want to pay attention to the leaf shape. This one here is an oval shape, more heart shape with a serrated edge, but sometimes it can be even lobed. But you will always have that serrated edge. That's a really good way to tell. On to number three, why did I put this on my property? Two reasons. Well, actually four reasons. The first two are for birds and wildlife. Now, it's no secret that a lot of birds are becoming... I don't want to say endangered, but threatened. We're having some issues with some songbirds, uh, some native wildlife that just doesn't seem to be bouncing back quite as fast as others. Uh, there are many reasons for that, but if you give them a good source of food, congratulations, you're going to have a lot of birds. And I'm not just talking about songbirds. I'm talking about like game birds as well. You know, you can get pheasants, uh, grouse, and turkey. They eat this. And when it comes to game, uh, deer also eat this. They like to eat the, uh, the, the shoots off the side. Good thing about mulberry, when these berries do fall, and a new tree does happen to pop up, then um, you're probably going to get things like suckers surrounding the base of the tree. The deer know this, the deer like eating them, so they come over and chomp out the sucker. So it's a good way to bring deer to your property if that's what you're wanting as well. Now, two other reasons why I grew this is because they are very deep rooted. They're a deep rooted, almost a soft wood, even though they're a deciduous tree, it's a softer wood, which is a very good thing for a windbreak. So if you live in an area that might get some crazy winds while the leaves are in, you know, on the tree, this is going to be a really good way to block a lot of that wind. I live in a hurricane zone, so any way that I can block some wind with a deep-rooted, strong tree is a plus. So that's another reason why I did it. And the final reason is because it is extremely deep-rooted, but wide-rooted to the point where it will keep your soil in place. The whole grade of my property is almost at like a 5 to 10 degree slope down towards the creek. So I have to make sure I keep in mind that soil is going to move after every hardcore rain. Well, if I put things like this all over the property, because I have three of these, that's only going to help me keep the soil in place and stop the hardcore erosion that happens with rainfall. Now, fortunately, the mulberry tree is extremely prolific. It will give you so many berries if you just let it age. Now, this thing gets very tall, it gets bushy, but it doesn't really matter because you will still have so many mulberries. As long as you have a ladder, you should be able to get a nice couple handfuls per every branch. Now, the one thing you want to pay attention to is a lot of wildlife also like this, so you will have some competition. But if you're out there right as they start turning colors, you shouldn't have an issue. Now, possible medicinal uses. Yes, the berries contain things like vitamin C and a whole assortment of vitamins, but there are other reasons why you want to grow this, mainly because of the leaves. There has actually been studies, and I had to write this down because I can barely pronounce it. Uh, the mulberry leaf tea 
is contributed to its naturally occurring compound deoxynogerimycin, or DNJ, which is responsible for its anti-diabetic effects, which have been absolutely studied extensively throughout Asia. So uh, yes, if you have diabetes or if you are a diabetic, the tree, the leaves that are on this tree can be made into a tea, which absolutely help you out with your diabetes. Obviously, this isn't some sort of health advice. You obviously want to talk to your doctor before doing anything like that. But uh, it's something that, you know, could be worth your research if you look up DNJ and its effects on diabetes. This tree is, you know, for that. You don't just have to be a diabetic to enjoy the leaves. If you want to make a tea for your own sake because it also gives you things like iron, calcium, and zinc, hey, that's good for everybody and it's very good for your immune system. Now, one thing I wanted to make sure I warn you is there's two considerations that I want you to consider before you plant these on your property. Now, the number one thing, these berries are staining, okay? When I say staining, I'm talking about if you pick them with your fingers, your fingertips will be stained red. But that's not just I'm talking about your fingertips. If you have birds around the area or chickens that happen to eat these things, well, when they poop, if they happen to do it on your driveway, congratulations, you will have nice purple reddish spots on your driveway that don't go away until you pressure wash. So keep that in mind. If you want to be planting these things, especially for chickens, wherever they poop, you're going to get a stain. The second consideration that I wanted to make sure I mentioned on this video is the fact that this tree, the mulberry, is an extreme producer of pollen. So if you have really bad seasonal allergies, other trees happen to make your eyes shut, you get your th scratchy throat and you're sneezing and you're absolutely miserable for about two weeks, you might want to watch out for this tree or plant it on a uh, end where the wind blows the other direction because this tree will produce copious, almost voracious amounts of pollen. So again, if you have any kind of issues with seasonal allergies, you might want to watch out for this tree there is a fun fact about this tree this is what they use in Asia to make silk because the silkworm eats the mulberry leaves so if you have the ability to if you want to do some crazy things if you want to make your own silk by all means you're gonna need the mulberry tree and it's always gonna be some painstaking work but that's how they do it they use the mulberry to make silk so there you have it hopefully you learned something about the mulberry hopefully this gives you the little push if you are thinking about doing it to actually do it like I said there are many different varieties you can grow there are three main subtypes this one is the red mulberry this is what they look like when you pick them they're almost purplish so people might mistake these for a black mulberry, but no, it's red. Uh, there are three different stages of how the fruit goes. It starts green, then it gets kind of red, and then it turns and looks like this. They are extremely good, very sweet, and yes, they stain your fingers. So just keep that part in mind. Keep in mind, I also don't do anything to this tree. I never fertilize it. I never do anything to it. I never specifically water it. I let the tree go and look at it. It's extremely healthy, so... Mm. Man, that's a good trick. So, if you learned something from this video, please do me a favor and give me a thumbs up. I'd very much appreciate it. Subscribe, and I'll catch y'all later, okay? Bye.